Hey you guys, it's Nathan. Today I'm gonna to share with you just a quick tip that I wanted to share. Uh, recently as I was making one of my product videos, I was looking at a bunch of the different images that I had done for like uh, the product photography section of it. And I thought, hey, I wanna add some of these into the video that I'm making, but I wanna put a little border around it, just make it look a little more um, well placed in the video. Uh, so you guys can definitely check out this video. It's the Viltrox VL200T. It's a nice video light that I would definitely recommend you guys checking out if you're looking for kind of your first light um, to add to your video or photo setup. But as far as for the batch process here, I thought, hey, what if I wanted to do that for all these different edited images? And that's what batch is all about. It's putting everything into a batch, into a group, and then doing the same action to every uh image so let me show you so we got like this one which is the back of it the remote the power cable for it uh you got the light itself you got the adapter you got power supply again and then you got the back of this thing so you got all of these different things what you can do here is you can do any of these adjustments to the side of it and the reason why i wanted to share this with you guys is because i haven't before and also just the detail that you're able to get into with some of these settings is really great so let me show you so first of all we have crop now crop probably is not something you're going to want to do because some of these images are shot at different aspect ratios so it's going to affect them you know maybe slightly differently so you could turn the crop on and you could increase what this crop would look like and it's going to start cropping in. And I believe these, uh, the numbers here that you're seeing are in pixels. So like 10 pixels isn't a lot, but like if you did, you know, 300 pixels, now you can see that this is the bottom part of the image. That's chopping it off on all the bottom parts of the image. So if you want that and you know that you want to crop that out, you could, but it's not as usable as some uh, other tools. So, but that's crop. You have resize, which could be helpful. Let's say you have a series of photos and you're wanting to put them into a video. Now let's say putting this huge, you know, 4,000 by 3,000 resolution image into a 1080p video, even a 4K video, that's almost too, that is too much as far as resolution wise. So you could go and you could say, hey, let's, instead of the original size, let's uh, kind of change it. So like, let's make sure the width of all of these different images is you know uh, like what it has set for default which is uh, 1280 you could go down all the way to like 400 if you wanted to make it a really small image or you can keep it up at some pretty high image as well but you can make them all about the same so if I'm gonna put it in a video I'd probably leave this setting on and get that resize to what I need it to be so that's really good so crop resize color this one, oh boy, this is going to be a little interesting. Look at all the adjustments that are available in here. So you could magic color all of them. You could bump the brightness up a bit more. You could change the color, the saturation, all these different things. If you took like um, 10 photos of the exact same thing, just in a slightly different motion, and your settings on your camera stayed the same throughout the entire motion or the entire range of those photos, you could put them all in here and then adjust all of them the same exact way um, to get a nice image that you could then have um, all those pieces of it, uh, however you do it, whether it's like for a quick uh, video that you make with a quick little animation of all those different photos, or it could be something where you're then uh, put, taking different pieces of those images and tracking an, the object or making some kind of creative work with it. So you can do that, uh, which can be really good. Uh, but as you're looking through some of these things, uh, yes, you could, you know, increase the exposure and it will increase it on every single one. But the question is, you know, is that going to be perfect? In this example, it's not the best, but look at what you can do. You can also hop into here to the filters. So you could go and let's see. Wow. Look at some of this stuff filter so you could do like sharpen bloom uh, vignette and film grade so you could do like a film grade on all of them so like if you wanted to give a specific look to all your images this is really for like fast work and things like that 
So you really gotta know what you're doing. For film, yeah, you can go in and you can select uh, your two-tone, you can do your look, you can do your different stuff. So like, let's say you just fell in love with this retro uh, 1930s, you could do that. And then it's going to make that look for all of them. And it really does uh, take a lot of the color out of the image, just leaves it kind of black and white. You can turn it off and on. Let's see, turn it off. Is it gonna turn it off? Oh wait, whoops, that's the filters, my bad. So you can turn this off and on. So you can see the difference of it and you can put multiples on up to six it looks like. So interesting. Also light, so you can put a light flare or something on the side of it and it will do it to all the different parts. But yeah, it's really, if you just know that you wanna make the exact same edit, image or edit on a bunch of photos. So you had that, film, light, insert. This is gonna be interesting. There is a section to insert text and stickers and other images. Wow, okay, this is interesting. I'll have to see if this works. So. Let's put text here um, and let's just do, or like we just put it in the middle and let's say you were just going to do like a watermark for a lot of your stuff. Look at what we have here on the side here, you guys. I'll bring it over here so it's a little easier to see. So we could do like Nathan Collins because this is my work and I want no one else to be able to take it. I'm going to turn that opacity down. It's just a watermark or something, but you could use it for all sorts of things. It's in the center. There's anchor points, you can do all the different stuff, like different colorations and things. You can make it look however you want. You can add backgrounds. The whole suite is there, which is really neat, which kind of makes me want to think of more ways to incorporate this into my workflow. Like, look at what I had originally. I put this, the name of the product on, every, on the bottom of every single one, and that was really good because I think it'll be helpful just for people to differentiate what the product is every single photo. And it doesn't mess up the photo in my personal opinion because um, it is primarily a product photo, not necessarily like an artistic photo. Um, but let's see how it looks at these in these different images. So the thing is on like this one was shot in a different orientation, it's going to be kind of messed up. The thing is if you adjust this one here, you're going to be adjusting it for the other ones as well from my opinion. I believe because like if I bring this one way up does it bring it up yep it brings it up for all of them so you'd have to really have just the right one uh, as far as like the anchor point or different things because it will adjust for all of them equally so keep that in mind but it could be a great way to put a quick watermark on your work before you send it off to a client or someone who you know maybe you're not for sure how they're going to use the photos but you're like hey if I put the watermark on it I know they won't use it for their own personal use. Um, but yeah, you could do stickers, text, all this different stuff. You could even insert an image. How does that look? Like if I was gonna insert my face on the edge of this image, how would it look? And yeah, once again, with the orientation, that's gonna be weird. But the other ones, yeah, you can put it in. You can do that. Um, I think resizing to the same, um, to the same uh, pixel size, as far as the same, Oh, can we long edge, short edge? Let me go over here. Yeah, so you can crop in here. So they would all be cropped down to the same like square or something. But yeah, try to make it so all the images are basically the same resolution, same um, uh, ratio, everything like that, um, the same dimensions. And then if you have that, you should be doing really good. Uh, do not enlarge, you know, different stuff. Okay, cool. So we got that all kind of taken care of. Let me turn off this resize because that's going to be really a lot to keep messing with. So we got that. Uh, we're going to turn off color. We're going to remove these different text objects because they're kind of just becoming a lot for the image. Then we have curves. This is neat. Um, I would actually really appreciate for you get from you guys to let me know what is pro and what's not actually we might just cover it anyways but you can adjust this the curvature here and it is nice because you do have the values here to be able to see the different amounts I think that's really helpful so you guys can definitely 
adjust those things. You just got to be careful uh, not to overly crush the image. But yeah, if you did apply that, you would then be able to apply that. It would be applied to all the images. You can turn on and off. Very cool. Then you can go over here to frame. And like one thing with the curves, you could do this simply to uh, just boost the contrast and just make it a more vibrant image. And you could just have that where it's like, yeah, just vibrance it. Uh, just because I'm going to post it online and I want it to really pop. So you have that next one, frames and shapes. This is kind of what I led with in my video uh, to start. But it was saying, hey, yeah, you can do some of these different shapes and you can also transparent uh, these different shapes as well. But you can also go over here to borders and you could give it that border turn or you could give it uh, something like this one is probably my favorite one. And I can decrease the stroke to a small amount so it doesn't really mess too much with the text here on the side. Or I can change the roundness to be just very, very minimal. But what's nice is that you can hit apply on that. And then that applies to every single one of the images, giving it a nice border. And in this case, also giving it a shadow, which will be a transparent shadow if you save it them out as PNGs. Now, saving out these different images here, um, I think we covered this pretty well. Just play around in there. There's some really neat stuff uh, to check out. But then if you go over here to save, um, and is there a project file way of saving this? I don't know. Load settings, save settings. Let me go over here to save settings. So there is a batch settings. So if there's something that you do a lot, and it is a complicated thing you do a lot, you could save it out as kind of a preset, which could be really helpful. Um, but yeah, if you go over here, uh, save is gonna be a little bit more complicated. So image format, if it's transparency, if there's transparency in it, PNG every single time. Like if you're putting a border on it, PNG every time. Everything else, uh, keep it on original format or keep it on JPEG. That would be your best options. Image quality, you can do 95, you can read down here, uh, different stuff, but yeah, you can bump it up to 100 if you want to. Um, there is the prefix that's gonna be added, so that's gonna be batch, and then whatever the image name was originally, you can change that to whatever you want, so uh, whatever works best for you. You can have it saved out to the current image folder, or you could have it to a subfolder um, called output which could be really helpful, but like what you could do, like personally, what I would probably do is like, I could just put batch, put batch in the subfolder. And then also you can go to custom and you can find exactly where you want to do it. So this time we're going to do it to desktop. We're going to do it to that right in here. Um, and yeah, it's going to go to batch folder. So we're going to set this up to, so the custom knows where it's going to subfolder. That's going to go to batch. We're going to hit okay. I'm gonna see how long this takes. So it's just doing this quick little, um, just borders around all of them. And it just did those six images in a matter of seconds. And then we can go to show X, uh, show in Explorer, which is just gonna show you the images. Whoopsie. Oh, sorry guys, in my explaining, my bad. In my explaining, I actually exported them as JPEG, my bad. Let me go back to batch. We're going to uh, delete these because those aren't gonna be useful for me. And we're gonna do this the correct way. Very good, so PNG every single time if there's transparency. All right, let's see how long it takes now. With transparency, because it has to do the transparency and the percentage of transparency that with the shadow, that might take a little bit longer, probably about 30 seconds or so for these images. But I hope that this has been really helpful for you guys. Um, just kind of a quick update. I wanted to share this because it was just something that I learned and I wanted to pass it along to you guys and just kind of a quick edit, quick put it up there. Uh, but I really want to thank you guys so much for your prayers during this time of me, you know, wrapping up different product reviews and really taking some time off of YouTube. It's been very helpful and uh, there's a lot of different personal things that I'm still working through and going through. but. I've been really blessed to see just God's hand at work through this whole process and through all of this. Uh, but thank you guys so much for your just patience about this. It's been nice to be able to, you know, post those different product tutorial videos um, that I need to because I committed to doing that and not seeing like 
the comments or my subscribers just completely plummet because you guys are like, oh, I didn't sign up for this. Um, but yeah, I just really appreciate you guys. Uh, so going back to here, uh, we have the batch folder that was just made. I'm gonna click over here, the batch folder, it's loading them in. And we can hop over to the viewer and we can actually look at what this batch folder looks like. Um, let's see, desktop over here. Let's see. Yeah, it's going to open up in a separate one, but that's going to be okay. If we go over here, look at these different images that came through the batch. So you got this one and you got that transparency on the back side with that. And the thing is, I didn't have to go through doing the exact same thing six times. I said, here are the images that I want to use, like for my video that I want to put borders on, drop them all in, hit it, hit it. And what's really nice is that you are able to in the batch, be able to just look through and see, oh, am I cutting it off too much? Do I need to adjust that a little bit? And I'm so glad that there's just a massive amount of adjustments that are capable to be done in this software. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this was helpful. And I pray that you guys have a blessed rest of your day and a really good weekend. Bye.